Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Eugene. Hello. We have Stuart. Hello. And we have Amy, who is currently... Hello. Back. Okay, she disappeared for a minute. Wasn't sure if she was back yet. Um, so yeah, so this week we don't really have a set topic. We're just sort of chilling and chatting, and it's the second last episode, so we thought we'd just do a chill and chat. So, um, I'd like to start off. Yeah, sure, um, I'd like to start um, Last week I gave a, a very brief plug at the end of the episode for the two Blu-ray releases that came out. Yep. And one of the, one of the plugs was for Target, supposedly having the... The Blu-ray combo pack. Well, um, I always I always take it very warmly when a company lies in their ads because apparently the combo pack was not manufactured. The only thing that was manufactured was either a DVD pack or a Blu-ray pack, and the digital was never made available. Ouch. So I had, so I had some very um, not so nice things to say to Target corporate over that one. Yeah, and nobody sending, nobody blames you on that. That's blatant false advertising in Australia. That's a fairly decent sort of you get your ass kicked here, have a couple of fines. And they should, and they should be fined over it. And I had some. And I had some pretty much similar comments to them over false advertising over it. And they're like, well, we'll send you a gift card and you can pick it up when it is made available. I said, you don't understand. This was not made available. Yeah. It's literally impossible to buy a thing that doesn't exist. It's just, it, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> On on the note of of bitching at people, um, I know some of you guys play Ark Survival. I know Amy does. Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure if Stuart tried to play it, his head would explode. And hey, Eugene, I don't know if he even does computer games. Um, I play one. And you guys, guys laugh at me over it. Fair point. Uh, um, but yeah, anyway. So, Ark, for those who don't know, Ark Survival is a survival dinosaur sort of game where you're... Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, you're on an island, you've got to gather your resources and build a base and survive, and you can tame dinosaurs, ride around and eat things. Um, it was... It's new release, so it's... Oh, sorry, early access on Steam, which means it hasn't actually been finished yet, kind of like Minecraft. And as a result, every... Once every month, they're adding sort of a new chunk of things in, and some of it's really cool, some of it's what the hell. But for the most part, it's really good, and it's got a fairly decent community behind it. Um, anyway, they've done two free um, DLCs for it so far. And then, just last week, they decided that the next big patch, they are going to put it off, and instead release a big surprise, which was a $20 expansion which is a direct violation of the Steam Terms of Service. You cannot do paid expansions on an early access game. The game must be finished before you can do expansions. And as a result, it has torn the R community, well, I'd say 60-40, 60 against 40 in favour of this move. Um, now, we understand why they're doing it. They got hit with a massive, massive lawsuit not that long ago. And they were forced to settle for between 10 and $40 million um, outside of court on that one. So they pretty much had the, a fair chunk of the money that they'd raised through ARC just vanish overnight. So I can understand why they're doing it. 
doesn't mean I think it's a doesn't mean I think it's the right move. And yeah, I've got no interest in buying it. I'm I'm not even sort of I'm not watching any of the video content that people are making for it. I'm just flat out ignoring it. I'm pretending it doesn't exist because I want them to actually put the content in the game they said they were gonna put in the game before they start doing fucking expansions. Do you wanna hear the funny thing? They've actually installed... The DLC is actually pre-installed into your game. Yeah, the the expansion was actually downloaded as an 8 gig patch. And then you need to pay 20 bucks US to them in order to unlock it. Yeah, yeah. I found that quite interesting. That does not work. Yeah. So they, they also released Primitive Plus, which I'm really enjoying. Have you played Primitive Plus yet, Amy? No, I've been told it takes hours to load. Oh yeah, it takes a good 15-20 minutes to load in. Um, But I actually prefer Primitive Plus over the standard arc. It seems more... um, More as if you're stuck on an island. Lack of a better way of putting it. I want... I play on a server, I don't play single player. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, I, I play on a server too. There's a group of us on this server, but it's... Because the technology doesn't sort of in the original art game, the high end technology is machine guns and rocket launchers and auto turrets and refrigerators and generators and stuff like that. And if you're stuck on an island, you can't manufacture stuff like that. That end of technology. As a result, Primitive Plus has sort of put a hard cap on the technology at about crossbows and campfires and stuff like that. So think. Native American Indian. I think Native American Indian versus um, modern day as the sort of the tech cap. So, anyway. Yeah, that's just my little diatribe about because I needed to vent about Ark because I hate you. I love you and I hate you at the same time. (laughs) I was going to say, you love it, but you hate it. Yeah. I feel so conflicted. So, so any other topics you guys want to cover off the bat, or are we just going to just... Well, my idea was for talk about show endings. Oh, how, yes. How some end, some don't. Yeah, how, how some, some actually... stories have a definitive book end, and some stories have it's sort of left open to continue indefinitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it can end... Yeah, like... 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 Eureka ends, yeah. but it can also it also runs in a loop. Yeah, because the end, the last scene of Eureka is the first scene of Eureka. Like, yeah, well, not necessarily the, the first, but close enough. In the first episode of Eureka, he's driving into town, and there's a guy coming towards him with the lights on high beam, and it's like, who's this arsehole? And the daughter looks out the window and sees them driving the other way, and it's like, what the shit? And the last episode of Eureka is that exact same scene played from the car driving out of town, so... And the older version. Yeah. Of the daughter. So, yeah. that Warehouse a- 13... What was that? Warehouse, thir- Warehouse 13 is kind of the same way. Yeah. They rush the final... The, the last few episodes, and then... You know the way it ends. It, it it's kind of an ending that just can continue on. Exactly, and it's like it, it's Stargate. Um, the final episode of Stargate Universe, as an example, is almost a perfect mirror of the first one. And they did that intentionally to sort of say this this thing is still going. It's going to keep going. And um, whereas some series like to have their bookend definitive ending, like Mash. The most watched episode of TV, period, was the finale of MASH for decades. Because it was a definitive bookend. The war is over. We're going home. And that's something a lot of shows before that point didn't really get. Um, But yeah. And, like, I do like it when a studio has the respect for a show to give it that chance. To have that ending. Like with... um, Oh, I've totally forgot, I've forgotten what it's called now. Continuum. Um, the studio turned around and was like, okay, you guys have come a long way. The show's really good. It's really popular, but it's just not bringing in the money anymore. 
So we'll give you a half season to sort of wrap it all up. And they did a good job with that. The final episode of, yes. of Continuum is absolutely spectacular. She gets back to... Pretty much every plot point is covered. Unlike Lost. <laughs> Just well, it is called Lost for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Lost. We don't know where we are. We don't know where we're going. Have fun trying to keep up. Defiance. You know, it kind of has an ending, but not really. Yeah. And that's because it's also based in the video games. Because um, Defiance is actually part of a online MMO style game, which I don't even know if it's still going. Is the Defiance yeah, MMO still a thing? Oh, look. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and there is sort but of... if you want to be... Yeah. Go. If you want to go with a really bad example, where the studios would not give a series a chance, uh, both versions of V... Yeah, now, V is one of those sort of interesting concepts that could have been so much better. So. Terra Nova, yeah. they just cancelled it. Yeah. Canned it. I might say if we want to talk about shows that got cancelled, let's just let's just not beat around the bush and just say Firefly. Yeah. Yeah. But see, at least it's Firefly got a example. movie. Firefly got Serenity. Yeah, fair point. Very few shows can say that that's happened. That at least ones that have finished early, like um, again, Terra Nova. Terra Nova was left very open at the end, and um, yeah, the, and that sort of sucks. Like I, um, yeah, and the jeeps were cool. I like the jeeps. Yeah, you can't leave shows that open yeah and like I understand why they do it they left it with a cliffhanger because they expected a season 2 and then they looked at how much the show cost to make versus how much the show actually made and went yeah you know what that didn't really work very well but the big difference with Terra Nova was they actually ran a fan page for a while I don't actually know if it's still out there or not where fans could animate up their own finale for the series and put it up and you could vote on which one was good, which ones were bad, and it was it was actually done fairly well. It's um, sanctuary. Oh, sanctuary! I love sanctuary. Maybe you might got us. Sanctuary really did have an ending, though, as I recall. Yeah, sanctuary yes did. Yes and no. It 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 had an a very it had one of those weird endings that's a little bit of both. It was a bookend ending, which sort of put a. That's, that finished the story, it had a really good conclusion, but it also left it open enough for more stuff to potentially happen. So, yeah, kind of like right. Merlin. What? Kind of like the, um, the, the yeah. BBC um, Merlin. Yeah, kind of like the BBC Merlin. Um, so. Well, I really, I really would have liked to see just one season in, like, m- with, in like modern day society. Yeah. <laughs> just to see how that would, just to see how it would go. Uh I'd hate to think of the damage Merlin would really do in the one-day society. Right, well, on, on the note of Merlin, here's a question. This one comes directly from facebook.com slash dailiestfandom. Who would win? Here's the scenario. Um, Harry, the, the scenario is Harry Potter and Merlin takes place in the same universe. Mer, uh, Harry Potter is trying to f- um, get some MacGuffin to help him fight Voldemort in um, the final movie. Let me finish. Um, that MacGuffin happens to be something to do with Arthur or whatever. Merlin steps in to try and protect Arthur. Or with Arthur's resting place. And those two come to blows. Who would win? Harry Potter or Merlin? Um, that is actually an interesting thought if you think... Because Merlin takes longer to cast, but is more powerful. Um, but Harry is very limited in his spells. So, yeah. So, Stuart, who do you think? Ooh. Can I say neither and just say Gandalf? <laughs> he wouldn't win either. Uh, I, I, actually, sadly, I agree with Amy. I don't I think know. I don't think Gandalf would win that battle. Like he's, 
Like, shy of him pulling a sword out and stabbing both of them and have them just, like, stare at him and go, That's not fair! I don't, I don't see how Gandalf could win. Yeah, it's sort of a... I, I agree. I agree that... Yep. I agree that Amy's on the right track because... Just because of how the two characters are. Yeah. So, I think ultimately Merlin would win. Only because in order to prevent Harry from using magic, all he's got to do is separate him from the wand. So if Merlin gets off one fairly decent push-type spell that has that result of the wand being separated from him, then there's not much Harry Potter can do at that point. Or you could get a dragon to sit on him. <laughs> <laughs> that would also work. <laughs> so, yeah. Come on, he's the Lord of the Dragons. Yeah. So, yeah. Um... It is an interesting thought, isn't it? Yeah. Who would win? That's why I like Deadliest Phantom. It's got all that sort of cool stuff on it. Yeah. Um, what what other shows didn't really sort of... Like, we know Star Trek didn't have a solid ending. It sort of left it very open for movies and stuff. And then Abrams. We'll pretend that... It just... <laughs> Abrams oh, come goes on. In the the recent one isn't that bad. Yes, it is. I stand. I stand. Well, I, I stand by the first of Abrams being the best of the three. The oh, third no, no, one. That, the third one being the third sort one of over into darkness. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't was about to say the third one is better than Into Darkness, but as far as I'm concerned, they both suffer so down the list. I would rather watch Genesis. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Doctor Who, um, not Doctor Who, but Torchwood. Torchwood. I was supposed to say, was to say where in Doctor Who are we Spe- going there? Speaking of Torchwood, did you hear uh, Captain Jack's coming back this season, next year, whenever the hell it's coming out? Isn't he coming for the Christmas special? It was a Christmas special, is it? I thought he was coming for the Christmas special. Yeah, he I might believe, be the Christmas I believe, special. I believe I saw a teaser that was like ages, it was like a few months ago, and it was like Jack is back, and nice. it was like for the Christmas special. Nice. So I think we're getting for the Christmas special. I'm not sure if he's actually going to be yeah. in the TV show, but I think he's in the Christmas special. So nice. Uh, if he's in the Christmas special, that's that's good enough. But can you imagine the amount of sass that would be on screen if Jack, um, River and the Doctor, River and the current Doctor are on screen together? I, I just want to see Capaldi tell him to shut up. And that's all I need. <laughs> it's like shut up, Jack. <laughs> And he's like, you've gotten grumpy in your old age, haven't you? <laughs> well, I want to. I'm sort of expecting it to be similar to a um, the River Song episode, where she doesn't, where he won't recognize him as the Doctor, or it'll be set timeline wise before he first meets the Doctor. That would be interesting. Jeez, that's getting a little too complicated. Well, not really if you think about it, because we are dealing with the Time Lords, so... Yeah. Oh, for the love of God, yeah, he'd he better, he, he better make a Rory is a Time Master joke. For the love of God, <laughs> make a Rory is a Time Master joke. <laughs> and just have the Doctor look at him and go, what? He's going, oh, don't worry. <laughs> just... <coughs> that would be great. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, he's I, done, I, He has done really well as Rapunzel, though. Oh yeah, he does. He has. He has. And I would, I would, I would also love to see like a Doctor Who reference in DC Legends, Legends. of Tomorrow. Just yeah, just like a just, just you know you, you just hear the you just hear the the noise and then Rip just turns around and is like, I swear I've heard that noise before. <laughs> no, no, no. Better yet, um, have one episode set in England. Have him walk past a police phone box and look at it and go, that seems familiar. <laughs> and then just keeps going. And yeah, it, just, it, it, it sort of looks at it, looks at it confused, and then just keeps on going. <laughs> and then later on, not... the only way that could be better is if there's another scene in that same location later on, and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes! <sighs> Actually, Librarians finished, sort of. Yeah, Librarians was alright. 
Um, it was... I know that Librarians came out before Warehouse 13. Um, like, the f first Librarians movie was out before Warehouse 13. But at the same time, I thought Warehouse 13 did a better job executing that premise. But that's more because I'm a science-y person than a magic -y person, so... Yeah, because that one's confusing. If it's science or magic, Yeah. depends on who you talk to. <laughs> exactly. And Warehouse 13 does a really good job of sort of explaining the wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff that they find, whereas the Librarians was sort of a, oh, this um, is a dearly majigger, MacGuffin, have the thing. Yeah. If for a mission, nothing else. Exactly. Um... Okay, here's a question. This was sent in by uh, some person, I don't know who. Wanted to share it on the page. We couldn't because we do sci-fi. But guess what? Michael's not here, so screw you. We're doing a little bit of fantasy. Um, oh. Oh, is this there? Okay, the hordes of Mordor are laying siege to Minas Tirith. It's up to you to mount the defense. You can bring nine characters from any other universe, so they can't be Lord of the Rings characters in... To protect the city. Who do you choose? Oh, that's easy. Okay. That's easy for me. Go. <laughs> for the Horde! <laughs> I'm just going to bring in all the leaders of the Horde for, for the Warcraft genre. You can't. There's a limit of two per universe. Alright, fine. Thrall and Sylvanas. Okay. So there's two. You've still got seven more characters. Hmm. Why is there like two per universe? That's just not fair. I just want to see the horde against the horde. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole reason of doing it. Like, yeah. The, um, I actually tweeted it out on um, my Twitter, which is at Spinobreaker. S-P-I-N-O-B-R-E-A-K-E-R. Uh, since that's the name that everyone knows me as, for whatever crazy reason. Um, it's not because I've been using it for years. Okay, let's see. My list is Iron Man, Lieutenant Ford, McKay, Hulk, Batman, because that would How be hilarious. How is this fantasy? I thought we were keeping fantasy characters. No, no, not just fantasy. We're doing sci-fi as well. Oh, okay. Um, Wonder Woman, Vegeta, because, come on, that would be hilarious. Like, Vegeta could take it on his own and everyone else could just sort of sit back and watch. Vegeta would just be like, oh, oh, speaking the happiest of Vegeta, person around just going, later. Just blowing everything up, going, This is awesome! Do -do -do. Steve. Actually, what about Gohard? <laughs> yeah, the problem with Gohard, Gohard is he doesn't like to kill, so he wouldn't really be sort of that keen no. on it. Gohard when he is 13. When he's fighting Cell. Yeah. Yeah. I know he doesn't like killing, but he still likes beating the crap out of everything. Yeah. Um, so we've also got Optimus Prime. And. Oh, Jesus God. Come on! <laughs> How would that not be hilarious? And you gotta, you gotta take, have something on the team that could take on an Oliphant. And who doesn't want to see the Witch King ragdolled as a puny god? <laughs> no man can kill me. <laughs> Just the arm all shriveled up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, just just uh, um, on your mention of Vegeta, just I've been watching um, Dragon Ball Super. I know, oh, I know you yes. don't like it. Yeah, so I was actually hoping we'd drift towards Dragon Ball Super, because I've been watching the more recent stuff. <laughs> Trunks, <laughs> Trunks has become the prodigal son. Yeah. <laughs> For those not wondering, uh, they're in a future tr um, Trunks arc, and future, future Trunks apparently knows how to do the final flash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which caught, which kind of made me geek a bit. I was like, wait, 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 what? He did see Vegeta use it. Yeah, but it takes a lot of power to, to use it. Yeah, it does take a lot of juice. Um, but yeah, he, he... even Vegeta doesn't use it very often. Although at this point, <laughs> yeah, not so sure anymore. So, do we know who Black is yet? No. I think that, I'm pretty sure he, Zamitsu made a wish to create something that'll put an end to all the humans. Well, next episode is meant to be with the Super Dragon Balls, so I think yeah. we find out. So, yeah. A lot of people thought it was, like, um, um, uh, Goasu, you know, like, his mentor. Yeah. Somehow he got, like, a... 
but I don't know. Or some people thought that he killed him, or, or like he merged with him, or something. Like that. I don't know. Yeah. But then Still when he pops up, like, oh, okay, that's not gonna work. Yeah. It'd be really interesting if it was like a, if it was like a different reality, Zamasu. Yeah. As in, it's not the one. As in, like it's the future timeline Zamasu, not the, the present. Yeah. Timeline Zamasu. That's what I'm thinking. Um. All overall, I've been but, loving this arc. Like, this is by far my favorite arc because I've always loved f- the future trunks. So. Yeah. Well, I think I know how they're going to defeat him. It I was... kind of really want future trunks just to somehow like. Something triggers him and he just goes Super Saiyan 3 and that would make me really happy. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I don't think that'll happen, but... Yeah, how I think they're going to defeat him was revealed earlier in the season. What is the weakness to Beerus? Food? (laughs) No. Beerus is... uh, Beerus is intrinsically linked to the Supreme Kai. When oh, Supreme yeah. Kai dies, he dies. They kill the Supreme Kai? So. Oh, I can't get Kyle Shambles. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll kill him. If we, if they manage to kill the demon, the, the the god of destruction of that universe, then he should fall. I think that would be a really interesting way to defeat him. So yeah, I think they're just gonna do this stupid fusion. Yeah. And we're just gonna get and we're just gonna get Gogeta Super Saiyan Blue. Yes. I think that's how they're gonna do it. <laughs> no, oh, I'm dead serious. That would I'm dead be serious. Broken as fuck. It's like it's like it's like I up, know. It's like uh and it just uses no, better yet, they they both scream the Konami code and he just falls over and dies. <laughs> like, oh Konami wow. code. But uh, like that's I think that's what they're gonna hit. That's what they've slowly been hinting at. I think, like they both can go it, so that way the parallels can be exactly the same for the fusion. Yeah, but don't forget they have never actually done the fusion dance in a canon story. No, the true. The only time true. they've fused in canon story is, is the movie with, in GT with the earrings. Yeah. So. We all know how that turned out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Overconfident as hell. Oh, yeah. No, to, effectively, Goku's confidence plus Vegeta's ego. That's a nightmare together. Oh, yeah. But it did give me my favourite Dragon Ball Z moment, which is the um, the amazing fighting candy. That is still my... <laughs> oh, the amazing chocolate ball. fighting candy. If, I ever need to laugh, I watch that episode because <laughs> it is the funniest thing at all. Okay, so for those three people out there that have never watched Dragon Ball Z, obviously Amy is one of them and Eugene is one of them. I have I have watched it. I actually own most of them. I just don't have the GT ones. Okay. I have uh, a few episodes. Okay, cool. So, so you guys are not part of the three people that have never seen it. Anyway, so Goku and Vegeta use the earrings of the gods to fuse together to become um, Super Vegeto. Gogeta. Mm. I, I can never remember which way around it works. Anyway, not the point. Um, uh, they call him Vegito. Vegito. Um, and he's effectively broken his dick strong because it's got both their powers combined and amplified. Um, and... Boo is just getting his ass kicked by him. Like, just absolutely ridiculously getting his ass kicked. And then... So, he manages to hit him with the turn into candy ray and turns him into a a tiny little gobstopper gumball thing. But for whatever reason, he keeps all of his powers. So, Boo is then trying to fight a tiny little flying gobstopper gumball thing, which is just flying around, absolutely wrecking him. At one point, he get, grabs it, goes to eat it by putting it in his mouth, and it just gets vibrated up and down in his mouth, and his head just gets stretched and stretched. And he just starts beating the... Because it's in his head, he starts beating the crap out of himself, and he lets it go. He's like, what is happening? Uh, I swear, animators must have so much fun doing that. <laughs> that was one of those moments of, anim- of any anime where I've just sat back and gone... What the fuck drugs were they on when they came up with this? 
<laughs> but it was brilliant. Oh, so funny. Probably they was probably they were exhausted from doing all the other work. Yeah. Decided to have some fun. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, I've really been enjoying Super so It's I know this art style still isn't the the isn't the best, but Yeah. Oh no, I'm they more than the make story. up. So the, the, they, the, oh, they more than make up with it with the story. Yeah, the like writing the, is uh, on the, point. The animation it still burns. Yeah, yeah. Like the ani- I, I don't know what the hell they did. They but uh, it burns so much. Actually, here's a question: Have you guys been keeping up with the new Digimon Tri stuff? I uh, um ahem duh. No, just make it short. Waiting for the next. Waiting for the next one to come out. It's only a bit over a month away, isn't it? I think no. I think it's end of the month. Yeah. I thought it was end of the month. I thought it was. No, look up, look it up on any charts. It's on there, under spring. Um, I'm just going on the on the wiki. The oh, wiki tells me that also works. But yeah, no, no. I'm actually really enjoying that. Seeing the the new mega mega forms in that at the last episode was really cool. I'm behind. Yeah. Cold work I've been doing, and digging giant holes. Yeah. Minecraft. Uh, Has anyone played RimWorld? N- uh, no, but it's I've one of my friends has, and he says it's very much like um, it's called Prison Architect. Yep, it is. And it's something else mixed together with it. Okay. okay. I can't last more than five minutes before killing the whole tribe off. <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got, I've got a topic we can talk about. Yep. Um. So, uh, Stanley's next three movie um cameos have been confirmed. Nice. So he's going to be in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Yep. Spider Man Homecoming. Yep. And Doctor Strange Love. Uh, uh, sorry, I mean Doctor Strange. But wouldn't it be funny, Str- Stanley and Doctor Strange Love? <sighs> not the point. I'm reading what the article says because they put that in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm mean, really hilarious in like in like Spider-Man: Homecoming if he's like a janitor or something. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to. No, no, he's he a history teacher. teacher. History teacher. History, history teacher. <laughs> uh, and then and then on the TV they're just watching all the Avengers footage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd be re- I'm really intrigued how they're going to do it with Doctor Strange. That will be... Yeah. That, that, that was my biggest... How are they going to do that one? Yeah. So... Because that sounds oh. like... That's really like... Because that, that movie just makes you... Like, question so much. Oh, yeah. Somebody put together on YouTube... A two to three minute clip... Which is all of the curses... In Deadpool... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, board. that would and, and have been just, hilarious just in, case, just in case anybody is thinking of watching this clip it is not suitable for work <laughs> no, no no it's not it's curses what do you expect yeah uh, how about this slight shift of pace let's go back to the sci-fi stuff for a second base star from New Battlestar Galactica versus the NX-01 from Star Trek Enterprise. Hey, but you want to put a Battlestar up against a... The, the, the base star. A Cylon base star. You want to put a base star up against an NX-class star our ship. Okay, I'm going with the base star. <laughs> Any particular reason? To annoy uh, EJ. Let's see. How, how many squadrons of uh, raiders are on that base star? Um, approximately 190 fighters per base star. Okay, and and those raiders can carry nukes, not counting the number of nukes and missiles that the base star itself carries. And the NX carries... Um, some torpedoes and some phase cannons. Yeah, I'm going with the base star. Yeah. He's looking at it logically. 
uh, I, I would think it this way. Excluding the fighters. If there is no fighters and it's just base star versus NX, I think the NX has got it. Because one well-placed photon torpedo and there's not much... Or photonic torpedo. Technical mumbo-jumbo. And there's not that much that a base star could do to survive that. Especially if it hits it in the midsection. But once you add the fighters in and the fighters' ability to sort of just kamikaze into said photon torpedo to pre-detonate it... Um, yeah. It's the, the NX is going to have a really bad day. <laughs> but the best chance it has is just phasering the missiles out of the sky before they... The nukes out of the sky before they can hit. Warping away, warping in as close as they can, firing as many torpedoes as they can, as quickly as they can, and warping the fuck out again. <laughs> so otherwise, I have no hope. Oh, if no, I they're, they're, they're going to have a bad day. There is, there is technically a way they could win. It's just... They're going to have a bad day in the interim. And if they get swarmed by fighters, there is nothing they can do to stop that. That's, that's GG. <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, and can in Star Trek, in, in the Star Trek universe, there's no carriers in Star Trek. So, for the most part, any ship in Star Trek would have a hard time dealing with that many fighters coming in. Yeah. Well, in the, the newer era stuff, the targeting system is more than capable of picking off fighter-sized objects fairly quickly. We see that in Next Gen, but in the NX-01 era, when that is incredibly limited, when we see the NX-01 outnumbered by the... What the hell were they called? They had the little flighty, floaty pod dealies that used to chase it around all the time. The Raiders. The Raiders. Yeah. Um, when it was out, when it was surrounded by them, um, it did have a hard time targeting them all. It couldn't sort of do the spread fire like the later gen ships could. So okay. On a totally different note, back to Marvel. Um, Star Lord from the MCU versus Boba Fett from Star Wars. Star-Lord. Star-Lord? They're both useless. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> None of that. I'm not having any of that. Okay, here's the scenario. Star-Lord has just stolen the Death Star blue one blueprints from... Um, the an Imperial he's, base. Well, he's stolen from the Rebels? No, no, no. From, from, from he, he's stealing don't them need for... Rogue, don't need Rogue One anymore. Stealing them for the Rebels to, for, to, to sort of help Rogue One. Um, so he's escaping and being shot at by Stormtroopers who are Stormtroopers. <laughs> sort of... Can't I save themselves? Yeah, he's pretty much. But Boba Fett happens to be there and he moves in to intercept. Um... Boba Fett versus Star Lord. Limited time. Star Lord's objective is to get to the ship and get a, his ship and get away. Boba Fett's objective is to take him out. Who wins and why? Go. Star Lord because Boba Fett is useless. I'm going Boba. I can't let you do that to him. <laughs> <laughs> He's not useless. He got taken out by a blind guy. And he got it eaten by a mom. Because he wasn't paying attention because he was trying to hook Luke. Yeah, and... And he got eaten by by a a pit monster. A monster that can't come up out of... That can't move out of the ground. If we're going non-canon, he comes out of that. Yeah, and then goes back into it. Multiple times. (laughs) If you you want to play that game, he actually looks worse. (laughs) Because this is literally a one single thing on a single planet that can't physically chase him. And yet he ends up inside it on three separate occasions. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, now, now I just could think of like Peter Pan and I could just think of the Sarlacc just with a ticking noise. <laughs> like the crocodile was like, tell me here's the ticking bubble. was like, oh no, not again. <laughs> so, Pretty much. So, okay, excluding the Sarlacc pit, assuming that 
Bob has got a similar number of tricks as Django at his disposal. Um, I would actually still think... Used. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I still think Star-Lord would win, but it'd be a good fight to watch. They're all useless. Yeah. <laughs> like, hand-to-hand, Bobber would have Star-Lord. Star-Lord's not very good hand-to-hand. Oh, oh, but... But... But a country mile hand-to-hand. Oh, yeah. Um, but when it comes to jokes and dance-offs, there's... Bobber's the... Bobber loses by default. Oh, no, I could see Bobber breaking it down. <laughs> that could be disturbing. Oh, that'd be so funny. Like, huh? Like, halfway through this big act, climactic action scene, Star-Lord does the whole um, Guardians of the Galaxy thing where he just starts dancing, and Bobber just is like, fine, two can play that, and starts doing it as well. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, wow. <sighs> so, yeah. Um, ooh. Okay. Here's a good one for you. Blade from the Blade movies versus the Winchester Brothers from Supernatural. Blade. <laughs> Blade? Yep. Blade's a badass. Good, but not that good. Blade's a badass. Yeah. So, just, just, you guys are just like Blade by default? Yep. Alright. Fair enough. Again, nothing against the Winchester boys. But he's you know, well out of their league against Blade. Yeah. Okay. They add that league most of the time, so what's new with that? <laughs> Here's one for you. Team Aang. So Aang, Katara. Oh, is this going to be an Avatar versus Avatar yes. battle? Zuko. Um, Toph. Forgotten her name. Anyway, the the six of that the six from Team Avatar versus Naruto from Team Seven. Um... So Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke. Uh, okay, okay, what he... what timeline for Naruto? Where are we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> if we're talking like end of Shippuden, then sorry, Ang, you're not gonna survive. <laughs> before, um, during the Ninja War, before Sasuke gets Renegan. Ooh, so Naruto I... could still use his his fox his yeah. QB it'd still be form. Naruto with that one. If it was yeah. before, if it was the first season of Naruto, like the first. Oh, say, yeah, if it was pre Shippuden, then I'd give it to Ang. But when it gets when it gets to that point, Shippuden, no. Even Sasuke is stupidly strong at that point. Yeah. Right. Okay then. Um, if we're gonna do that, uh, let's find another good one. There's so many pictures. Oh, here we go. This is another one that comes from Deadliest Fandom. Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim versus Godzilla from the 2014 Godzilla movie. Oh, God. Actually, no, that one wasn't that bad, actually. Yeah, that one actually was, was pretty good. Godzilla. Godzilla? <laughs> I kind of really... It's like, it's Godzilla. It's like, you, you kind of love Godzilla. <laughs> Actually, how about Godzilla against the Indominus Rex? Godzilla? With... Godzilla! God- Godzilla is 100 metres tall, the Indominus Rex is barely 10% of that. <laughs> Splat. Yeah, pretty much. He'll it- it- probably step on it without realising. Okay, like, then. What's out of my feet? <laughs> Mario with all of his upgrades versus Sonic with all of his upgrades. Ooh, ooh. You? I'm a Nintendo boy, but I'm going the hedgehog in this one. <laughs> Too quick to stop? Not just that. If, if you said he's got full access to his abilities, including his his super his supersonic form, Mario can't touch him. Yeah, but Mario, supersonic uh, is incredibly limited period of time, and if Mario's got access to his upgrades, he's got this star, which is the equivalent level power up. But it's also, it's also short as well. Yeah, so it's a the case stars. Of... If you actually, if you actually time it, the star actually lasts shorter than the supersonic. Yeah, and superson and in supersonic form, sonic can go at the speed of light, literally. Mario's gonna have a very bad day. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> as I said, if you give him full upgrades, 
The only thing that can beat a Sonic is a shadow. <laughs> sure, I was going to uh, say that. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, what about a flash? Ah! Uh. God damn it. Uh, anyway. Cause, yeah, because Flash won't slow, doesn't have to slow down. He doesn't nope. have a time limit on his power. Okay. Um, Eugene, do you want to do the uh, hobby report or model report or anything like that? Um, there's really not much going on with hobbies right now. Uh, however, I will invite anybody in the area that um, the Central Pennsylvania International Plastic Model Society is holding their plastic model show, PenCon, on Saturday, September 17th at the U.S. Army Heritage and Education Center in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And Perry County Hobbies will be one of the vendors at this show. So if you're in the area, come on out. Um, there is a small admission fee. And children will be given a make-and-take model to assemble during the show. Nice. And that's the hobby report from Perry County Hobbies. Short and sweet. Right, one more, one more verses. Just one final one. How much news do you have, Stuart? I've got some pretty big news, actually. Oh, okay. We'll make this one really quick, and then we'll move on to the news because we've still got plenty of time. Megatron versus Iron Man Hulkbuster. <laughs> Hulkbuster, it's Megatron for God's sake. <laughs> which ver- which it version? Which version of Megatron? It's Megatron. Megatron from the Bay movies, um, take your pick, versus Hulkbuster from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, specifically. Okay, so Megatron's Megatron's a tank in this case, or the heavily armored truck, so um, he's got a bit more firepower than Iron Man Hulkbuster. Yeah, the Hulkbuster's more to just knock the Hulk out, not really... Do not to kill him. But Megatron will get overconfident. Mm-hmm. Megatron is technically taller. Like, he's physically taller than not the Hulkbuster armor. He may Hummer. be taller, but again... But he's also a lot again, scrawnier. He has, he has the weaponry by far down pat. His overconfidence is what is why he fails every single time. Oh, then again, he gets so conf- like he gets so overconfident when he gets that killing blow that he leaves too much time for someone to counteract it. Yeah. Well, not only that, he's also got Star Scream. You failed me yet again, Star Scream. But it was yeah, your plan, executed by you. You did everything. Why is it my fault? Go fuck yourself, Star Scream. Oh. <laughs> uh... Interesting thing with um, oh God, where's Kelly? Um, YouTube is supposedly they're meant to be starting to censor the. Uh, no. Oh yeah. Um, that's actually not a thing. That's a misunderstanding of what happened. I did some digging into that myself. Um, what happened is that would qu- work. Quite, a, quite a while ago, YouTube stopped monetizing the more controversial topics, and didn't tell anyone. Their most recent update started telling people. So, as a result, videos that weren't monetized, which were harder to find, are now easier to find and identify as to why they're not monetized. Now, those videos were never monetized at all, anyway. So, the video creators were never actually making money off them from the first place. So, and technically, YouTube isn't censoring. What they're doing is they're filtering the content to make it more ad-friendly, which would then allow for more revenue. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that action, but... What it means is YouTube is growing up. It's no longer... Um, it's it's progressing more towards the, the way that mainstream media works. Where, yeah. So anyway, I, yeah, I, I did some digging into that. And it's not necessarily censoring per se. They're not saying you can't say stuff. Which is the definition of censoring. What they're saying is you just won't make money from saying it. And while yes, that can potentially be viewed as a form of censorship... Um, it's technically not. Oh, um, um, Star Trek Continues, new episode, came out over the weekend. Oh, nice. So it's, it's the first episode since the guidelines have come out for a fan, and they're not following the guidelines, by the way, so. Shock or a gasp? 
Well, we know why they went after Axanar and Horizons. It's because they're... It was so similar to what they were yeah, planning. Yeah, it was a direct conflict with what they were working on. There's not so much. Yeah. That's um... A... Yeah, the episodes were good, so... Yeah. Definitely check it out. Yeah. Alright. So, who wants to hear my big news? We do. You're, you're pregnant? Ha <laughs> ha, God, no. <laughs> not the, not this early. Like, we... Like, I we didn't want I, kids, but I not did, now. I didn't say that Jody was pregnant. I said that you were pregnant. There is a difference. That's why I said God, no. <laughs> no, no. As of six o'clock last night, I am confirmed to be a volunteer for Oscomicon Brisbane. Woo! Congratulations, okay. sir. Yep, I'm going to be at the console and tabletop gaming area. I am in my element. <laughs> Excellent. Note to self, torment Stuart. Plus side, I don't have to worry about getting you a fucking media pass. Nope. I'll be working all weekend. Mm. Kind of wish you were Rainbow Sun Frank's handler, though. Yeah, I didn't apply to be a handler, so... Mm. At the time, I didn't know he was coming, so I just applied for what I knew. Fair enough. It'd be pretty hard to actually get to be a handler, though. Oh, yeah. Because everyone would want to be a handler. I don't think I ever would want to be a handler. I'm happy be running. The I'm happy being where I am. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm not, probably not meant to say this, but um, supposedly there's meant to be a H they're going to have a um a VR area set up with a HTC Vive. So nice. Very nice. I don't. I, I know that's at Sydney. I don't know what we got for Brisbane yet. So yeah. Well, the Sydney one kicks off in only a couple of days. So. Years. Yeah. Speaking of which, Rainbow should be flying into the country very soon. But I didn't say that. You don't. I, I, I don't know that. That that was not a thing. I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. Yeah. Just... Too bad we can't sell them for a couple of hours. Yeah. Next Tuesday. Yeah, that'd actually be pretty cool. I might send him a message and see if he wants to join us for the hundredth. <laughs> He's in Australia. He may not be doing anything. Who knows? They'd probably be running around the countryside going to see the sights. Yeah. I'd say he'd probably be at a zoo holding a koala like everyone else. Yes. Uh, no joke, literally every American guest that comes goes to a zoo and holds a koala. I yeah. think it's sort of compulsory to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I promise you might find him in Kangas Gun, so... Yeah, it's it's going to be a lot easier Vegemite. now that they're spawning everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I'll say, yeah, now they also have to eat Vegemite afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, no. He has explicitly said that he does not want any Tim Tams or Vegemite um, because he has gone, he's gone off sugar and he is seriously sick of Vegemite because every time he visits he gets given like kilos and kilos of the stuff, so <laughs> just don't. So just don't. So Give he's it... gone off sugar and gone off Vegemite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, if you're going to give him Vegemite... Give it to Joe Flanagan instead. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because reasons. Because you can't. Because reasons. To annoy him. Yeah. So. What else we got We're in the We're not news? encouraging you to annoy the guests. Not at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, alright, so, um, remember uh, the Dark Knight movies? Yep. The Christopher Nolan trilogies? Uh, the Bat Pod, which is basically the, uh, the bat cycle. Yep. The, is going up for auction. Ooh, nice. That would be a fortune. And I'm going to spare 80 grand lying about? No. 80 grand? Just I... give me a second. Let me just check the money bank. Uh, let me see. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> what was that you just shook around? <laughs> my, my piggy bank. <laughs> That's well, pretty heavy. Technically, it's a Velociraptor, but that's not the point. <laughs> but you just okay. With the guess, we're going to have it sweeping over. Too bad Amanda's happy not to pull out again. Yeah. You mean I was Comic Con, right? I was Comic Con. Yeah. Sorry. Please get them right, damn it! Yeah. <laughs> but too bad our one of our favorite people we wanted to go and see. Has pulled out yet again. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but she's got her own thing she's got to do, and she's been invited to she's do directing. some more directing work, so... Yeah. And, it, we, and I suspected direct. she was going to drop out fairly early on, because they're selling the tickets for everybody else's dinner, and not a single reference to hers, and I'm like, Yeah. Yeah, something right here. And then about two weeks later, like, yeah, she's not actually turning up anymore. And it's like, well, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> They probably had an inkling that she'd have to pull out again. Yeah. Not that she didn't... They Maybe she wasn't doing dinners. Yeah. I believe all of them do the, all, the, all the dinners, so... Yeah, they all do the dinners. So I heard um, that Joe can be a little bit flustered at the dinners. He doesn't necessarily like doing them. But Rainbow enjoys them. Mind you, it is kind of... Think of it from their point of view. You're sitting at a table full of random people you don't know eating a meal. Like, it's the the pure definition of frickin' creepy and awkward. Blind dates. (laughs) Well, see, I want to ask them about, like, the show and stuff. I like try and just, like, ask normal conversations. Yeah. Like, what sports sports scenes do you go for and stuff like that? Just keep it casual. It'd be interesting if... If we got the media pass and end up with River. Ended up what? With River. Yeah. Rainbow. Uh, so, I'll say it, River, what? River. So did I miss some news with a backup? What? <laughs> well, so, no, I haven't Rainbow. seen that. Uh, Alex, Alex <laughs> Kingston keeping, or Summer Glow is coming? Con. Give me old Cos Comic Con and I'm really annoyed that Sydney got this. But Sydney have a Marvel booth. No. Oh, sorry. It, Speaking a of... A Disney booth. No, but one other thing that annoys me about Sydney Oz Comic Con, to no end. Like, I just pure hatred of Sydney Oz Comic Con right now. It's Sydney? No. They get fucking Katie Sack off and we don't! Go fuck yourself, <laughs> Sydney. I'm sulking now. There's a lot of places that... A lot of um, people don't actually... A lot of actors don't want to come down to Brisbane and that. They'll come to Sydney. But won't come to Brisbane and that. Yeah, I think she's there for prom- to do promotion on other on other stuff. Yeah. See, I have heard whispers that somebody from the Thor stuff will turn up at Oz Comic Con Brisbane. They're just not allowed to announce it beforehand. I'd well, laugh if Thor Carl turns Urban's up. in Thor, so... Yeah. I'd laugh if Thor so they turns up. I already have a Thor person. He's, he, he, Carl Urban is in Thor, but... Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if it was like Anthony Hopkins because I know he flew down for a cameo. Yeah. Thor what or Loki sp- turns up. <laughs> oh no, if Thor or Loki turned up, that'd just be the end of everything. <laughs> even I would, le- even I would leave my post and run over. Yeah, you'd be that. No, no, no. no. The only way that could be better, they turn up full costume. <laughs> and no one recognizes them. Yeah, like, they just blend in. They just blend in and just walk through the crowd, and um, they just and everyone's just like, "Oh wow, that's a really cool costume." He's like, "Oh, thank you, thank you." <laughs> That'd be great. <sighs> Come on, I have seen some great. Um, oh, no, if it, if he was in full character, he'd be like, "Costume? What is this costume? Yeah. You speak up, mortal." Yeah. Oh man, that would be the greatest promo video ever. <laughs> have like from from Marvel's perspective, have them walking through Oz Comic Con, have Thor walking up to people dressed as Loki. Brother, what has happened to Brother. you? <laughs> brother! Brother, why are you a female? That would be spectacular. <laughs> no, no, he goes up to it and it's like, Brother, or should I say, Sister? Yeah. <laughs> what sort of trickery is this? <laughs> anyway, any last big news? You've got 60 seconds. Less than that. Not really. It's nothing really major. Alright. Uh, well, that's no it for... Yet week. That's it for <laughs> this, the second last episode of the Save Sci-Fi podcast. We are probably going to... reorganise? Well, the the (laughs) weekly podcast, anyway. Um, We shall catch you guys next time. Make sure you check out facebook.com slash save sci-fi for all your sci-fi related news. Facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom for all your battle related stuff. Facebook.com slash Garrison7, I think it is. Something like that. Just look up Garrison7 on Facebook. It's a lot easier. Um, For all your Garrison7 related stuff and ability, check that out. Check out Perry County Hobbies. And definitely check out Oz Comic Con. Um, it's going to be really good. And now I need to go and contact Thor really quickly and suggest that idea to them. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.
Now, where did I? But I say, will Scott be near him? Just get Scott to be near him. Just get Scott to be 